Good morning and welcome back to City Line. With me is Tacoma Musical Playhouse. Oh, and guess what we're going to be talking about? My Fair Lady. That's right. I don't know if there is any other musical. Maybe I'm going to say Sound of Music that is more beloved than My Fair Lady. So let's talk with Lee Shin and John about what we can expect on stage. So first off, John Douglas Drake, thank you for all always coming back to the comfy couch. Oh, you're welcome. I was thinking as I drove here, I'm like, gosh, he is, he's like a, he's like the world's best date. <laughs> he just shows up consistently with something new to say. He's interesting. He's low maintenance. I love this man. So thank you so much. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Be sure and tell Jeffrey I said that. Okay. <laughs> and Leash and Moore. Oh my gosh. You are Eliza Doolittle, and it says on my on my sheet you are an actor, but you are so much more than oh. that. Well, thank you. My dear, thank you for being <laughs> of here. Of course. I've wondered when I was going to have you in the studio, and when I heard that they were casting for My Fair Lady, uh, my brain went to you automatically. Oh. I was like, and then I said to John, once you were cast and I saw that you posted the first night's read through mm -hmm. and how excited you were, I was like, yeah. that is that breath of fresh air she brings yeah. to this role of being yeah. so grateful. Well, it's, so it's a bucket list role. It is. It is a bucket list role and who, who wouldn't want it? Exactly. And it's not done very often in mm -hmm. Tacoma. I think the last time was Tacoma Little Theater. Was my, am I right? Um, Steve we, Terry and Cassie Wilkerson? Yeah, I think Yeah, so. I mean, that, and that was, okay, uh, I'm, here we go, 24 years ago. Well, we did it. Oh, okay. About eight years ago. Oh, no, 11 years ago. 11 years ago. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So it's been done, but it hasn't been done that often. No, it's not. It has not been. So why, My Fair Lady, especially since you did it eight years ago, which in a season for a theater is, it's not that far of a reach. Right. But most uh, most of our audience really wanted to see it again. There we it's go. Their audience One pull. of their favorite. Absolutely. People love My Fair Lady. It is right. it is timeless. So what's it like for you to direct this show? Well, the challenge is, is always trying to find something new. If somebody knows the show very well and the movie's out there and all of that, it's how do you make it relevant for today's audiences? Mm -hmm. And so that was what was my challenge for this show. And I really enjoyed that challenge because at the time, Things are happening in the in the world right now that are really relevant, almost to My Fair Lady. In yes. A sense. So um, that's what my challenge was with this show. Incredible cast, really hardworking cast, beautiful voices, oh. and, and just um, yeah. you know, it was a delight triple threats. Work. Yeah. So that that took away that scare <laughs> for a director. You know, yeah, I knew I had really set. great people. The set is beautiful, and, and oh my gosh. Oh, and look at this. Here we go. <laughs> I love this. Oh, the candle. And, <laughs> and, you're, and, you have, and you do the marbles also, which is mm -hmm. so amazing. So one of the beauties of, of a live interview is that we get to kind of follow the flow of the conversation. And since you brought it up, I want to go in that way. And that is that how do you make this 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 story in my house we always had a rule you read the book you go see the play and then you see the movie i mm -hmm. never strayed from that when i was introducing my daughter to theater and this has several different endings to it but above all how do you make eliza relevant in this day and age of i'm going to say it me too and mm -hmm. time's up yeah well eliza doolittle is upwardly mobile Yes. She is this woman who has decided she is going to sell flowers, which is um, not a high class position, but a, a position that puts her as an independent woman. Entrepreneur. Right. She's not beholding to her family, her dad. She goes out and she sells. And um, so she's selling one day and she meets a man who says that he can change her language. And it's left at that. She's the one who thinks, I'm going to go to his house and I'm going to change my life. Mm. So she is, she's our quintessential feminist to begin with. Yeah, she is. She goes there. She stands up to him. She calls him a bully when he's a bully. She stands up to power every moment she can. Yeah, she does. And she does change her life, which is pretty miraculous. I love that. I love that take. And I hope that there are parents with young children of 
all genders that are get that heard this right now and that will come see this and understand what you just said because it's no different than having an opportunity presented to you and saying I'm going to step through that door right. being an education being an audition be it a chance to 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 live in a different neighborhood yeah. it's all that self-belief absolutely and bullying has been around for years whether it was whether it's it's Henry Higgins bullying Eliza in a way that he doesn't know right. or Eliza looking at him saying you crossed a boundary you right. need to stop right it's all there right and at the time you know Shaw talks about that this story is about class mm -hmm. and so for her to step above her class to step truth and yes. talk truth to people above her class, that is an amazingly strong woman. It is, it is. So we've talked about how you brought it current, but what did it feel like just to step on the stage as Eliza Doolittle, as Leishan Moore? Because as an actress, right. as you said, this is one of those bucket list roles. Right. right, well, you certainly bring your own life experience to any yes. role that you take. So for me, I, I, I grew up in a very small town. And I was that girl who was like, I'm going to step out and I'm going to be more than what I am. And I'm going to, to fight to get to the city and be a musician and do all these things so I could see easily myself in Eliza Doolittle. Yes. And such a joy to, to be able to sing the songs that are just so beautiful. Yeah. Who, who doesn't like to sit under a big bright light, yes. sing a beautiful song with an orchestra? That's it's true. That's as good as it gets. And and the songs, I mean, wouldn't it be lovely? The rain in Spain. I could have danced all night. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite song is on the street where you live. Oh, mm -hmm. That song is up there with begin the begin with me. Mm -hmm. It just it's like oh, it just slays me every single time. Yeah. How did you manage the Cockney accent? Right. So that was a bit of a, yeah. a struggle. Uh, I began. The moment I got cast, I was like, oh, okay, let's go. Oh, no, you've been practicing this <laughs> no, since you were eight. No. Well, I'm sure I've watched the movie yeah. many times. Yeah. Um, so I found a dialect coach out of Kansas City who records all the dialect Leash. for every show. So I just contacted him and got a track of all the dialect. And then um, because he was male, it was a little difficult to transition from a male cockney to a female cockney. Um, so luckily, one of our costumers, Grace Stone, is uh, from England and has a Cockney accent. So she- You planned that. Sure I did. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So she brought me over for tea and biscuits and we went through the script and talked about it and got the accent. All oh tidy. my got gosh. That is so serendipitous. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> jackpot. If that wasn't another yeah. reason right. faster, just from the obvious attributes, bingo. So let's, let's uh, we only have a few minutes left here and I'm gonna talk about Beauty and the Beast, which is the next production coming up, which is another great production that you can take from the beginning and modernize as well. So, right. so there's one more, tell us about it. Well, we just had our first read through last night and the cast is Great. I'm very excited about the show. Belle, again, is like Leishan. Ingenue, it's, but uh, off Reese the hook Martinelli. Talent. She played our Little Mermaid last area, our Little Mermaid. Okay. She's very headstrong. She's on on the brink of, of um, breaking out and, and being a professional actress. And so we're really lucky to get her. And the gentleman playing Gaston has got arms of death <laughs> already. So we don't have to Tickets to the gun show. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then the, uh, we have a new gentleman playing the beast who's got an incredible, oh, beautiful I love voice. Oh, I that. I love so, new yeah. faces. Yeah. I love old faces, but I also love new faces. Right. Mm -hmm. That is wonderful. And then you've also got some special events taking place around uh, My Fair Lady and the Adams Family, too. Right. Next weekend, we do our dress rehearsal for the Adams mm -hmm. Family because we're on our way to the International you Theater are. Festival. And we're very excited. And it's a way for us to kind of brush it up. And with an audience, you're invited. Anyone's invited to come and see, kind of cheer us on. And then on the June 9th, we have a food truck festival. It, we have two days, uh, two performances on one day, an afternoon matinee and an evening matinee. And so we like to do different things to draw in different, different audiences as well as the community. And so we're doing a food truck festival where they can come a little early and have dinner or they can stay late after the matinee and have 
a late lunch or early dinner, and there'll be several trucks there. And oh my gosh! It'll be okay. a lot of fun. You are like the Lee Iacocca of theater. Well, it's my staff. A little bit is. of marketing goes on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it my is your staff. You have an amazing. Team. I do. I I do tell you that. So speaking of amazing teens, you would not have made it to this 25th year without it. So what do you have planned? Well, we just announced it. We're very excited about it because we're doing some some new and some old. We're um, bringing back a few of our favorite shows, but we're opening with Disney's Newsies, which mm. is a dance spectacular. You don't want to miss that. And then we're doing White Christmas at, at the holiday time, which was the first show that we have ever had where the people were selling their tickets on Craigslist. Oh. Because it wow. was so popular. <laughs> so we're expecting a big one for that one. And then we're doing um, a, a conglomeration. It's a review of Andrew Lloyd Webber's music. Aww. Community theaters across the United States have been invited by Andrew Lloyd Webber mm. to take his catalog and create their own show. And it's only community theaters. Professional okay. theaters can't Congrats. do it. And then we're bringing back Drowsy Chaperone, which is yep. one of my favorites, yep. obviously. And then the Full Monty. Oh! which is an audience yes, favorite. Yes, it is. Mostly ladies audience Of course. <laughs> and then our summer production is Mamma Mia. Mm. Oh my gosh, so. boy, you are not playing for that 25th season, are you? You're no. pulling out all the I'm stops. Pulling out all the stops. I like that because as my grandmother says, tomorrow is promised to no one and mm -hmm. next season's not promised either. Exactly. So, yeah. Go out with a bang. And let's close with our summer camp question because your summer camps, my daughter was in one of your summer camps. I love your summer camps. Your summer camps end up with people like this growing Absolutely. Up. So, so is there room and what can we expect? There is still room. Uh, we have great camps, uh, great shows. They're, we're even doing The Addams Family. Oh! That is being directed by Rafe, who has played Gomez. So we're very excited about that. Um, Cinderella Kids, Music Man Kids, oh. uh, Thoroughly Modern Millie. So go. it's a great lineup. We handle probably over 200, 250 kids, and there's still some openings, and there are scholarships available oh. for, for kids who can't afford the camps. So. That's a lot of trust from parents when you mm -hmm. say 250 right. kids, which that cannot be underscored. So, right. boy, what a reputation. Thank you, you, Missy, for working so hard in your life to bring this role um, to life and uh, into the modern day focus yeah. on the stage and give your mom a big hug. I will. Me. Thank okay. you. And you, oh my gosh, 25 years. I'm going gonna, I mean, gonna to see you before that, but just thank you. Thank you so much for you and Jeffrey for your vision, your mission, and your passion because I'm sure there were times when you thought, ah, it's two years, we're done. But oh, bad idea. Yes. But 25 years later, you're, you're still shining, so thank mm, you Thank so you, much. my pleasure. All right, break a leg. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back after a little bit of musical chairs with uh, the Children's Museum of Tacoma here. You don't wanna miss that. See you in a bit.